So in your blood and urine, nearly everyone's got these insecticides, and about 50% of people um, had detectable levels of these herbicides, the glyphosate, the Roundup. And we looked to the gut microbes to see if the, uh, these chemicals were having an effect. Was there a difference between people with high exposures, high levels in their blood and urine versus low levels? And there was a, a clear correlation. And so people who were eating more fruits and vegetables were, had higher levels of uh, these, these chemicals. And they also had different changes in their gut microbes. So the gut microbes were producing different chemicals in response. So, so people listening to this could be like, oh, so that's great. I'm going to give up my fruit and vegetables and I'm going to go back to my meat and um, you know, saturated fat diet and I'm going to avoid all these horrible risks, Tim, that you're talking about that I might get more cancer. Like, Is that the right um, takeaway from this? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, well, if you go back, you know, obviously people who eat lots of fruits and vegetables – uh, compared to people who who don't or are, you know on ultra processed food diets of minimal fiber, are likely to live ten years longer and have half the risk of heart disease, diabetes, uh, dementia, all the common chronic diseases, and they're going to uh, weigh less. So that's we've known that that the fiber is really important, the plants are really important, the um, Polyphenols, the defense chemicals in plants, are really important for all bits of our body. Now, what we're talking about here is, I think, you know, we're talking about a possible 10% increase in cancer risk, which, you know, in terms of a lifetime risk, is a fairly small one for vast majority of people. And not every cancer, we're only talking about a few specific ones where there's, there's evidence. And something like non Hodgkin's lymphoma is a rare cancer most people haven't heard of. So you know, I don't know the exact rates, but it, it's going to be less than one in a few hundred people get it. You know, I haven't given up eating fruits and vegetables when I can't find organic, okay? To me, the advantages far outweigh any risks. So we're talking about a subtle difference here that probably only makes a difference if we're having them regularly and, you know, for decades, but we'd still rather not have all of these you'd pesticides definitely rather in not our have it, food, particularly, is what you're particularly at certain times in life where, you know, I don't think we talk much enough about it, but there's critical times of pregnancy or feeding young children when, you know, there's so much happening to the body, the brain, and really don't want unwanted chemicals washing around that have all these effects we still don't really understand, you know, unless there's no way around it. Now, you, we've talked a lot about sort of the negative things that might come from pesticides and therefore organic food is is almost just sort of saying, oh, well, at least it's got less of those bad things. Um, but one of the things I've heard is, well, that organic food is supposed to have more nutrients in it. And that's part of why the, the idea that the soil is alive with its own microbiome, all these things is better. Is there any truth in this, Tim, or is that just good marketing? Uh, there is some truth in this, and there was a meta-analysis about eight years ago, about 300 tiny little studies that put them all together, and it showed that uh, on average, the organic uh, produce had uh, more minerals in it. It had less cadmium, which is a, like a toxic mineral, and importantly for for me, it had around 30 to 40% more polyphenols. 30 to 40%. Okay, so that's enormous. So that's like, you know, increasing your polyphenol intake by 30 or 40%. And that really is important. So just to remind people, that's the defense chemical that you find in plants that occurs naturally and is in the often the tips of leaves or the, the bitter part or it's in the berries or these things naturally. So uh, these are the things that naturally protect the plant against uh, insects and the environment that it turns out the the organic ones who are raised in our sort of traditional ways have more of and i think that's really fascinating because uh people have, there's no one's exactly sure why but i think 
the, the hypothesis I like is the fact that if you give the if you surround these these plants with uh, insecticides and spray, you sort of taken away their um, def- you don't need that defence, and you give them masses of uh, fertilizer so they just grow. So all they really want to do is grow. They're just like these giant sumo babies that are growing big and fat as fast as possible. And the environment is like super easy for them. And they have no defenses. And so, you know, just like, uh, you know, if you grow too fast, um, you're likely to get have a really bad immune system because all the focus is on growth, not on prevention. Pre- I, I love defense. this. So it's a bit like... So they are like the plant equivalent of um, Homo sapiens living here in the 21st century in the developed world, are they? Where, you know, we can sit on the sofa all day, we don't need to do anything, and we now know that you really need to go to the gym, it's really important for your health. And you're saying it's a bit similar, that these yeah. plants, the environment is not they're stressed couch, enough. But they are really couch potatoes. That's, they're, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're sitting there in the sun, everything's done for them. They don't have to bother. They don't have to produce these defense chemicals like they used to because and they're no longer fighting off the yeah. um these insects and also i guess they always get the right water and they get the right fertilizer um and that means i guess thinking back to some of the things you've talked about the microbiome that they end up being different from the sort of foods we might have eaten until uh you know 100 years ago so they have a lot less of these chemicals that you know our, our bodies would have just assumed they would get naturally with with the food because you know way back in in the past like no plants were being treated like this so everything presumably had all of these defense chemicals because they were all in this fight for survival yeah exactly and this, it's the same thing you know if you look at how chickens have evolved um how we've you know grown these massive uh, chickens in just a few weeks, they don't have anything like the nutrients and things of the old scrawny chickens that uh, we used to eat. And I think this is all our food has been primed for growth and size and to look good. But it, uh, when you when you look into the detail, you're, you're getting actually less of the things that you need. So if you do uh, buy the organic equivalent, you're going to be getting, you know, Around forty percent more polyphenols, you less less toxins in there. Um, you'll be getting uh, slightly more minerals on average, and uh, you know you you are going to be getting a, a slightly better product. So the idea that it was a con, which was what I believed ten years ago, uh, is is not really true. So I'm going to ask the question that our listeners have really wanted to ask from the beginning. It was like our number one question um, uh, that we, we we got from all the listeners beforehand, which is, Tim, do you eat organic food? 